Mountains are still being moved Strongholds are still being loosed God, we believe it Yes, we can see that Wonders are still what you do We are here for season of time in which we are living. So I just encourage you to grab your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 5. We're going to get right into the Word of God this morning. I, As you're finding your Bible and getting ready, I just want to just take a moment to say uh, I trust that these uh, video cast messages have truly been a blessing to you uh, during the season in which we are living. And uh, our goal is to get back on this campus as soon as possible uh, while maintaining the social distancing and all the guidelines that are laid out before us. But uh, we are living in a very unprecedented time. And uh, so I just believe that the Lord has a message for us. And so I just encourage you to prepare your heart to, uh, to hear what the Lord has to say. Looking at Acts chapter 5, uh, the verse that truly captures the heartbeat of the Lord's message, in my mind, is found in Acts chapter 5, verse 
42. And um, it just simply says this, and every day in the temple and from house to house, they continue to teach and preach Jesus is the Messiah. So the church continued to, to preach and teach the message. Jesus is the Messiah. A few Sundays ago, we looked at the story of how the New Testament believers were scattered as a result of fierce persecution. They were scattered all across uh, Judea and Samaria and began to fulfill God's purpose and plan, which was to bring the good news of Jesus ultimately to the uttermost parts of the earth. Um, the scripture says that the disciples preached Jesus everywhere they went. And I, I love that statement because I believe that that is the Lord's desire for us today. The early church went through various seasons uh, and yet they preached the message of Jesus Christ regardless of the season that they were walking in. They may have been scattered, they, they, the landscape may have changed, but yet they shared the good news of Jesus to whoever would listen to them. In nearly 2,000 years of church history, uh, the church has experienced highs and the church has experienced low points, but the message continues to be preached. Wherever we go to work or play, we bring the good news of Jesus Christ to those who will listen to what we have to say. When we punch a time clock at the factory or when we walk into the grocery store or we talk with an associate or an acquaintance of ours, we preach Jesus the Messiah in the course of our conversations. The greatest outreach of the church is the individual who brings the good news message of Jesus Christ to those who will listen. As the spirit-filled church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must be his church on the move. In fact, I've entitled this morning's message, The Church on the Move. You know, we may be quarantined. We uh, may be uh, sequestered away in our houses, but we are not silenced. We may be temporarily disconnected, but we are not out of commission. As long as we have breath in our bodies, as long as we have the air in our lungs, we are the voice of hope. We are the voice of joy and peace with God that can be found through Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we are Christ's church on the move. Now, there will come a day soon when the, the threat of this uh, coronavirus will subside and this pandemic that we are currently operating in or going through will become part of our past memory. People will try real hard to put all of this behind them and get back to life as normal. And that's just simply part of the human coping mechanism. Nothing wrong with that. But to that point, I believe we have entered into a new season of ministry. I have felt the Lord really just impress that into my spirit while we have really been scrambling to learn how to be the church outside of the four walls of this building. We have quickly seen how fast things can change, how quickly life can change. Institutions that once operated consistently year in, year out, for years and years, with only minor changes, have had to revamp and reimagine business as usual. So to say that this is unprecedented is truly an understatement. In my opinion, God is not responsible for this coronavirus. It is evident to me and many people that this pandemic was caused by human beings who were doing biological research and carelessly spread a deadly virus into the general population. And that virus quickly spread from person to person. And now we have seen how quickly one virus can disrupt our way of life in just a few short months. This pandemic has drastically changed our world 
and I believe has ushered us into a different season. We've had to learn how to be the church all over. We've learned the depth of our love for God. We've, we've learned how to do virtual church, how to do video casting, how to Zoom, all of those things. You see, in years past, this country came together during times of crisis, and this country has experienced unity in seasons of chaos and crisis, particularly when we were fighting against a common foe. But that's not the case with this pandemic. We have entered into a different season. As we move beyond this moment, I believe we can expect to see the world continue to be the world and do what the world always does. We can expect to see the godly, the ungodly rather, continue to be ungodly and do what ungodly people do. I believe we can expect to see even greater division in our nation than we have even in recent past. And the question may be, why? Why is this pandemic different? The answer is simple. And that is, there is a cultural clash that is taking place right now between those who hold a biblical worldview and that biblical worldview is clashing with an agnostic worldview. All of this will continue to lead to greater division and I'm convinced we will even see it leading to a ramping up of animosity against those who hold to the biblical worldview. I say all of that because I believe that the pattern that we have seen in the past is the pattern that we will continue to see. And when the biblical worldview clashes with an agnostic worldview and the majority of the people are holding the agnostic worldview, you can see persecution begin to ramp up against those who hold a biblical worldview. And I'm convinced that is the season that we are in. Now, I know I may be simply stating the obvious, but there are some powerful truths that we, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, need to get our minds around as we move into this new season. Regardless of the season that you find yourself in, God is still God, and the kingdom of heaven will continue to advance in the midst of the new season. Regardless of whether the church is living in a season of peace, a season of favor, uh, a time of prosperity, or whether the church is going through a season of conflict and animosity and adversity. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ will continue to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Or should I say the church that is on the move will continue to do that. I say all of that because I'm convinced that we will soon begin to see a season of conflict ramp up. And it may not happen all at one time. In fact, there may be a, a season or a lull in the persecution, but mark my word, I'm convinced within five years we will begin to see the, the type of persecution ramp up that we see in biblical days in the New Testament church. In fact, whenever I look at the scripture, I see this paradigm of two seasons in the early church. In Acts chapter 5, we see a snapshot of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ on the move, advancing in the good times and also advancing in the middle of the bad times. So let's get right to the scripture. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers were meeting to get regularly in the temple area known as Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. Crowds of both men and women, as a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow may fall across some of them as they went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and their, those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. 
Now, if I could just highlight this particular portion of the early church's ministry as a season of victory, a season of lives being changed, a season of prosperity and joy. People were being set free from the power of darkness. Bodies were being healed. They were singing the song that is real popular today. Uh, miracles happen when you move. Uh, they were singing mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we believe that wonders are still what you do. It was the church on the move. Now, in the season of the good times, we've seen the power of God at work in our lives. You and I have witnessed the power of God moving just like we read in the book of Acts chapter 5. We've witnessed the seasons of revival. We know what it means to operate in the blessing and the favor of the Lord and the favor of those around us. We know what it's like to enjoy uh, worshiping the Lord as the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in a season of tranquility, if you will. But soon the early church would enter into a new season. They would have to learn how to operate as the church on the move in the midst of a season of distress and persecution. In this season that I believe that we are moving into, we've already seen what it means to be the church outside of the four walls of this building as a result of a pandemic. We've already seen how quickly our lives can be restricted, our movements are restricted, how quickly life is disrupted by a single virus. What would it look like if it were a more sinister season? In Acts chapter 5, verse 17, the church moved into what I would describe as a sinister season. Verse 17, the high priest and his officials who were Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. I'm going to pause there for a moment. What would happen if we experienced a season like that? Oh, pastor, that, that's not going to happen here. Do you think not? We've already seen on a small scale what has happened as a result of a simple virus. So what would we do? The early church did not panic. The early church did not walk in fear. They just simply trusted in the Lord. They allowed God the space, the room to be able to fight their battles for them. And that is exactly what we will have to do as well. I believe the new season that I'm talking about will be a ramping up of the kinds of things that we have already seen on a smaller scale. And we need to be prepared. We've already seen what some radical governors have said, some of the things that they have ordered um, their subordinates to do as a result of a simple virus. Now imagine if those same governors, those same leaders had a higher platform of authority. It could happen. What will we do? The answer is we will continue to be the church on the move. We will keep on preaching Jesus we, we will have to keep on trusting in the Lord, allowing the power from heaven to fight on our behalf, just like the early church did. Look at verse 19. But the, an angel of the Lord came at night and opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching. You see, in the new season, the church continued to follow the leading of the Lord and walking in obedience to the instruction from heaven. And that is exactly what we will need to do. In the new season, we will need Holy Spirit-filled leadership more than ever before. We will need to know that we are walking in step with the master as we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We will need to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit for every decision, 
The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the boldness to be able to stand on solid ground in the midst of strong opposition. Now, look at verse 19. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, the jail was securely locked with the guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Verse 25, then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. Of course they were. That's where the Lord wanted them to be. If I could offer a word of encouragement to the body of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, it would be the truth that even in a season of adversity, even in a season of conflict, you and I can have an expectation that heaven will fight on our behalf when we are following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Even in the new season, you can expect the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to be just as real and just as powerful at work and maybe so even in a greater way. God sent an angel from heaven to open the prison door and set the apostles free. And I contend that the Lord God Almighty reserves the power to do it again if need be. In the new season, you can expect the good news of Jesus Christ to continue to be preached regardless of the wishes of others. Jesus said this gospel will be preached in the whole world and then the end will come. The good news message of Jesus will be preached. Now it may come at a cost. It may be through a whirlwind of a fight, but the message of Jesus Christ will continue to be preached. The disciples found themselves in front of the Sanhedrin on charges of violating their order to not preach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and the apostles said this, we must obey God rather than human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on the cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit who has been given by God to those who obey him. Now, the Sanhedrin and the religious leaders were furious. They wanted to stone the apostles but a, a man named Gamaliel gave the Sanhedrin this advice in verse 38. He said, so my advice is leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely by their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. You see, the church on the move doesn't sit idle just because of human threats. The apostles were beaten. They were warned not to speak in the name of Jesus anymore, and yet they continued to go out and preach in spite of all of the threats. In verse 42, we open with this message with this. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. Regardless of the season, regardless of whether we are living in good times or whether we are ministering in times of adversity, you can expect the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that is on the move to continue to move forward, advancing, tearing down strongholds, preaching the message of Jesus Christ. Mountains will continue to be moved. Strongholds will continue to be loosed. The song that we hear on Air Warren so many times, 
is so powerful. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that miracles are still what you do. And we need to sing that. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. In this new season, we must prepare to be the church on the move. And that means making sure that we are preparing, that we are learning the lesson very well on how to be the church in the good times and the church in the season of persecution. Because I believe it will come soon. Prepare your heart. Prepare yourself. Be the church on the move. Make up your mind right now. As for me, I will be the voice of righteousness and godliness. I will be the voice. I will be the church on the move preaching this message. Jesus is the Messiah. Now the church experienced the season of, of freedom of ministry. And then of course we know that Stephen was martyred and the church would eventually go through a very drastic season of persecution. The church has always gone through seasons and I believe that we are getting ready to see that new season. We must be prepared to be the church to minister this gospel message in the new season. Let me pray over you. Father in heaven, I thank you for the strong message that you have given me. I thank you for the, the, the opportunity to preach this message. And Lord, I know that um, many people may not agree with this message, but I'm so convinced in my soul, this is the message for the hour. We must learn how to be the church in the midst of a new season. I pray that we would learn the lesson well. I pray that we would prepare ourselves to be the church in the midst of persecution, that we would prepare ourselves. Here in America, we have enjoyed a great season of prosperity and tranquility of ministry, but I believe it all, it all will come to a, a full circle of change very soon. And I just pray that we would position ourselves to be ready to be the church on the move in the midst of fierce opposition. Now I pray for those who are listening to this message. I ask God that you would just touch them right where they are, strengthen and encourage them, give us a pure resolve to be the church alive, the church on the move, being what you have ordained for us to be. Now I pray for those who may not know you as Lord and Savior, as they hear this message, Lord, they are feeling a witness in their spirit that this message is true and that you have something greater for them. They may not even know you as Lord and Savior. They feel that, that conviction in their heart. I just pray, God, that they would open their heart to you right now through a heart of repentance and say, Lord, forgive me. I hear this message. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God and the message that has been preached is valid and relevant. And I just call upon you to be my Lord and my Savior. Prepare me for this season that we are entering into. I pray in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, tell somebody about it. Let them know about your decision. Get baptized in water and follow the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of your life. God bless you and may you walk in this new season with victory in your heart. Be blessed. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for Are here.